Want to learn how to make transitions like this? Or like this? Well, you're in the right place. What is going on guys? Shooting Dave here. So good to see your faces. Welcome back to the channel. Now, as you saw from the introduction, we're going to be making mask transitions inside DaVinci Resolve, a pretty cool and popular technique by videographers and filmmakers all around the world. So, what is a mask transition? Well, essentially, all you're doing is taking a piece of footage where something moves in front of the lens and using that as a mask to move into the next piece of footage. It is a great way of advancing your story along the lines in a nice, quick and exciting manner. And I'm going to show you how to do that inside DaVinci Resolve. However, if you're new to this channel and you don't know what I'm about, I am at Shooting Dave, a photographer from London that moved here to Los Angeles and I make video and photo editing tutorials. So if that is something that is of interest to you, then please do consider subscribing. Okay, enough waffle, let's jump into DaVinci and I'll walk you through the simple tips on how to create this cool effect. Let's go. So to make this technique work, you basically just need two pieces of footage. Now, I have two pieces already on my timeline. I have me walking past the lens, and then I have some footage of my drone flying. Now, obviously this is a very hard cut, but what I've done is I cleverly walked in front of the lens, and it's gonna use my leg as the transition point. So you can use any footage that you have, as long as some object moves in front of the lens, and it has to cover the entirety of the frame, like something like this. Now, it could be anything you want, it could be a hand, it could be a person, it could be a post, it could be a sign, it could be a window, a door, whatever you want, as long as it covers the entirety of the frame. So once you've got the two pieces of, um, of footage on your timeline, cut down to the size you want, and only showing the bits that you want to do, what you're gonna do is come over to the first piece of footage that you're gonna be masking, and you're gonna hover over that, and you're gonna jump straight into Fusion. Okay, so once we're inside Fusion, there are a couple of things that I like to do first of all. The first thing is I like to make sure the viewer is as large as possible so I can actually see what is going on. That way I can get a nice and accurate mask for this transition. The next thing I do is I scrub through the timeline a little bit until I find the area where I want the transition to start happening. Once I've identified that, I like to go a few frames in just to make sure that I'm seeing the full effect. In this case, my leg is going through. So I want to see the maximum amount of my leg as possible so I can start making the mask from that. Now, we'll get onto that in a second because the Fusion will actually keyframe and do all the keyframing for us with our mask. Once I've done that, I select media in one, which is the footage of my leg going through the frame. I then come over to the polygon tool and I hit that. Now this will add a mask and in most cases, the screen will go blank. And if it does, don't worry, simply hit the inspector and go over to that invert mask button and tick that and that will allow you to see what is going on. So you should be on the frame that you want to start the masking from. And now simply just use the polygon tool to draw around the part that you want to mask out. In this case, it is my leg, so I made sure to draw around the bottom of my trainer and up my calf, going around the screen and then completing the mask. So make sure that the mask goes out of the screen because it, you want it to reveal the entire frame. Now in this case, the left hand side of the frame is the footage, footage we want and the right hand side of the frame is the footage that we want masking so we can show the footage beneath. It sounds a bit messy, but we'll get into it in the timeline in a minute. So once you've masked it, move forward a frame and adjust the points to match. Keep doing that until your mask reaches all the way across the frame and then once you've um, done that go back and make sure that your mask starts outside of the frame as well so in this case my leg is going from right to left and I wanted to make sure that I had those points going fully off the right of the hand side of the frame to fully off the left hand side of the frame and that way we are revealing. Now I know what you might be thinking, the mask might be looking a bit crap. Now if it does and is a hard edge, what you want to take care of is soft edge and border width. This essentially feathers the mask that you just created and you want to balance that so it matches the amount of motion blur that you have in your footage. You don't want it too soft and you don't want it too hard. Now if you're starting to introduce more of the clip below that you didn't want to have in there then adjust the control points until you get the feather that you want. Once you've done that it's time to jump back into the edit page. So I move the clip upper level onto track two. Then what I like to do is find the point where the transition starts and I use that as a start point of our next clip. So basically, as my leg comes through the frame, you can start to see the clip below. 
Now what I like to do is play it back a couple of times and make sure that I'm happy with it. If I'm not, then I go back into Fusion, adjust those control points, or maybe tweak the feathering on the mask. And then once you've got it dialed in, you've basically done it, and that is it. It's super simple, and it's actually a lot of fun. I thought this effect was super complicated when I first started out, but turns out it's a lot easier than I thought. And thankfully, Fusion does all the keyframing for you, so you don't have to worry about adding control points or remembering to do that. All you're doing is moving points on the curve. Now, if you've got something simple like a lamppost, then really you only got two control points that you have to worry about the top and bottom of frame you just slide them through and this effect works brilliantly with anything the only thing that you need to worry about is make sure that it covers the entirety of the frame just like that so that is all from me guys thank you so much for watching if you like this video give it a thumbs up if you've got any comments or questions let me know down below if you haven't already please do subscribe and follow me on instagram and as always guys i've been at shooting dave and i shall see you in the next one see ya